So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can import IFC files, um, extract the relevant information that we need, and export that in a way that we need to for setting out, and then turn off what we don't need, and then load in a point cloud, and then test to see how well the point cloud fits the design, or vice versa. So I'm going to start by bringing in an IFC file. So I'm just going to drag and drop. So this is a sample file that we'll make available when we distribute Enforce, because it'll help people learn the software. Uh, turn off the label. So, for those that don't know, an IFC file is fundamentally a file that combines geometry with attributes. Okay, uh, and if I click here, you can see that it's highlighted uh, an element in the tree that says roof. If I spin it around and select the other one, the other side of the roof is selected. So you can imagine an IFC file is essentially geometry with intelligent attributes okay now these attributes some of them are custom some of them are specific to the IFC format um, the main uh, point of note is that the elements themselves have a type okay and all the types within that file are distributed are oh, sorry displayed here so you can very quickly hopefully hone in on the items that you need just by essentially um, only looking for the types of objects or types of classes that you you need to work with if I want to turn something off, say if I wanted to turn that roof part off there, I can just untick it. And if I tick that one there, I can do the same on that side. Or I could just say, turn everything under that node off. Okay. And if I turn them all back on, it all comes back on. Uh, if I click on this piece of wood here, you can see these are all rafters. Okay. And if I wanted to turn them all off, all I need to do is turn off the top node and they will all go off. Okay. So you can see as we look into the into this uh, small file that we've got all sorts of items in here. Okay, so you've got baths and kitchen utilities, um, you name it, um, some gym equipment, I guess, all sorts of things. So if we were going to, for instance, set out the building, we don't need to worry about all that other information. So all I need to worry about are just the walls. Okay, so I need to find a way of isolating the walls. Uh, I don't know what they are in here. Uh, I could obviously go and find them and turn them off. If I click this item here, you see that says it's a wall of some sort. Okay. Okay, so I've selected one wall. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also select the other wall adjacent to it. And what happens is I can obviously now see that both are selected. But what is interesting is that you see both of these have this external value set to T for true. If I now say, say, find similar, it finds all the other walls that are similar, i.e. that have the same properties as both of those walls. I can then do invert and then do off. And that just leaves me with the walls. OK. And at the moment, there is no way in this particular view to extract setting out information, although there will be in the future. You'll just be able to sort of nominate a height somewhere and it will basically just pull out the line work for that height. So if I do invert selection and then do commit triangles, I can then call these just walls for argument's sake. Or if we say external, I guess. External walls, and press OK. That now creates us a second model in the project manager called external walls. There they are. And if I go into 3D on that, there they are. OK. If I just turn the contours on and turn the triangles off, and there's that information that we need to set it out. Okay, so we got it. We just don't have a, a direct way of doing it yet, but we will do when we go for our, our final release at the moment. We're just in beta. Okay, so that's a very quick guide to working with IFC files. I'm now going to import something a little bit more complicated and then compare it to a point cloud. So close that one down, remove that, and then now I'm going to bring in some still work. Okay, so we now have a much, much larger IFC file. If I zoom all the way out, you can see that it's uh, it's now um, doing a lot more processing. Uh, now, I deliberately run all of these demos on uh, not especially amazing hardware. So if I click on hardware info, um, you can Google that if you want, but that's a very old, very slow by today's standard GPU. So... <clears throat> If I click on the top node here, you can say it's currently rendering 9,405,000 triangles, okay? And if I zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, okay, so the project, the Explorer now finds the element I've just clicked. And if I click on zoom to, 
and zoom in okay and zoom in and zoom in that element that I clicked is being sort of ghosted out <clears throat> but you can see here I have literally all the nuts and bolts in this file as well okay so that is dramatically adding to the overhead of the um, the number of triangles that we are that we're looking at now if we're going to compare this to a point cloud then Enforce is going to use every triangle it sees in the current view uh, so obviously we need to limit the triangles in the view the geometry in the view in other words to just what we need to do the comparison against so this says it's a bolt assembly okay and its type is IFC mechanical fastener so one way of getting rid of all these bolts is to say go to the element here and if I say select mechanical fastener and go add to selection it says it's found 8865 of them they all get highlighted and I can just untick enabled and they all go away okay now we've also got these things okay now these dot the drawing as well these are a layout point okay and they have a type of column so I can't just say turn off all the columns because I'll be left with no steel if I did that so I need to find a different way of deleting those Clear this quickly right so um, layout points so these are layout points I can't do it by column because there'll be lots of columns in here but if I uh, hit find similar you can see it's now found 3,303 of them and I can just turn them off. Okay, uh, now if I go to the very top node, you can see I'm now down to 1,350,000 so rather than the previous um, 7,000, 7 million or 9 million, whichever it was. But there's still an awful lot of entities in here that I don't need, okay? Now, I could spend a long time finding all the elements that I don't need um, but as we have the IFC information here, uh, these elements, each element has some pretty common types. One of them is length. And chances are I could probably use that length characteristic to eliminate what it is I don't need. So I'm actually going to say get rid of this type. And in this property field, I'm going to say length and choose less than because it's all in millimeters, say 1000. Okay, now if I say add to selection, it will find all the entities for me that are, or rather that have a value or have a length less than uh, 1000. And you can see it's found 68,000 odd of them. And if I untick that, that very much simplifies the model, gets me pretty much down to just what I need to worry about okay for the steel and if I click on the top node I'm down to only 312 almost 313,000 um, triangles much much less uh, than my original nine and a half million okay so that's made my job or rather it'll make the job of Enforce in a minute much easier when it comes to checking what data or rather checking the point cloud versus the steel so to start that process I'm just gonna shut this view down and I'm going to load the point cloud okay you notice that all the other IFC information has disappeared because I'm now using the clipping box that was in the point cloud last time I used it but obviously I could drag it out if I need to but I don't so I'm going to leave that in there right so what we're going to do is we're going to recategorize the data based on its distance to the point cloud so to start that process I click on group by DTM. So the tool was initially developed to check um, point clouds versus a, a ground model, say for Earthworks, but we can actually use it for anything. Uh, and instead of saying model untitled, which is the current name of my model, what I do is I can change Enforce's attention uh, from the model to the IFC. Okay, so I select steel IFC. And I'm going to say, right, obviously the shortest distance is zero. And I'll say for this category I'm about to create, I'll say, I want to nominate uh, it to be anything less than 10 mil. Okay, so I click add band and it automatically then does that for me. And I'm going to click add band again because then it's going to give me another band. So again, from one to two, sorry, one centimeter to two centimeters. And if I add band again, it's going to go from three to four. Okay. Um, 
down here, I need to make sure that it only works on information that's visible. Otherwise I could be testing other information that I don't need to worry about. And I don't want to enable just a vertical distance check, which again is just done to help speed up um, if you're working on pure DTM data. So untick that and press apply. So those new groups are added for me. Enforce has just chosen random colors for them for the moment. And it's now projecting each point in the point cloud to the IFC model and then moving it around into different categories for me based on its deviation or rather based on its perpendicular distance to the steel. So now that all is finished, we can see the results. So if I switch the point cloud uh, into group colors, and uh, then anything red isn't being uh, basically moved. So if I turn that to unassigned and then come down and turn off the IFC, we're left with the point cloud. Okay, and what we're looking at then is the data is now colored based on its deviation from the design. Um, if I now clamp uh, a section to the end, I can do that just going up here, two point diagonal. Uh, so if I go, say, from down there to up there, that gives me that section. Just make it a bit wider. Okay, and there we have we have our elevations, which you can obviously then slide through the building to see how different parts of the building or different parts of the steel uh, conform to design. And if you want to, obviously, you can then say, well, everything blue is is not relevant. It's not relevant, so I can, I can turn that off, and then we can just see which parts of the steel are outside of the various tolerances that we um, that we've set. And that will obviously then be obviously saved to images and. Uh, shared with whoever needs to see it. And that concludes uh, this introduction to IFCs and comparing point clouds to them.